just gonna stand here and say nothing until Ansel gets so uncomfortable that he pounces on me. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna start doing free fly lives again, hopefully every week, every other week. It depends on how disorganized things get and how chaotic things get. We were doing them for a while, for a long time, and they were fun. And then we got overwhelmed with too many products, too many ideas, too much faffing around, and we stopped doing them. But we're going to start doing them again because Ansel's here, and he's super organized, and he's going to make it seamless and wonderful for me to do. Um, so the theme for the first one is I just want to go through. We've had a ton of Ember questions. Uh, you feel free to ask any questions you want in the chat. I have a bunch that were sent in. We're going to go over those. I'm going to talk about Ember a little bit, and then we have a couple little fun things that we'll talk about that are outside of Ember. Um, <clears throat> But shipping update, so uh, the first Ember is still slated to ship in March. The first batch is sold out. I think we're coming up on the second batch being sold out pretty quickly here. Um, the team is just hyper-focused on getting the first uh, launch package essentially finished, all the software working well, well together, and then getting that first one out the door um, in March. And kind of the way we work here, nobody on the team breathes a sigh of relief until there's a hundred that have shipped and they all work great and customers are happy. So we're trying to get to that unit 100 shipped. Uh, everybody's happy, everybody's pumped uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so just quick camera overview for everybody. Um, if you don't know about Ember, this is the next in our line of cameras. It's a high speed camera, it's very small. Uh, we've got three different models built up here, but the, the core package is about, it's an 820 gram cube, it's about four inches. Um, and it, the key features, uh, it comes with a PL, or a, I'm sorry, a locking E-mount. Uh, it's got internal four terabyte SSD that is good for about 46 minutes of record time. It shoots to Apple ProRes. It's got all these nice I.O. up at the top here, so you have nice easy access to power, Ethernet, HDMI, USB-C, and GPIO. And then additionally, you can't see it because this one's got the, our kind of tiny battery package on it, but there's an expansion port on the back that will have ultra high speed expansion port for removable external media, that kind of stuff. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, yeah, and then we've got a whole bunch of accessories from handles to monitor mounts to NATO rail. We try to make this thing as small and easy to use as possible. Ansel and some of the mechanical engineering team are working on a dedicated FPV mount right now. And then we're also thinking about kicking off a project um, that would try and as tightly integrate Ember into an FPV drone as possible. And so the first version of that might mean just making the stock Ember work really great with an FPV drone, but the, the, kind of where I'm excited to go with that is in the future, the idea of kind of building the electronics of Ember into an FPV drone so you can have um, a very, very small package that can still do all the crazy stuff that FPV pilots want to do. Um, I think there's a huge benefit to keeping it small, uh, super light, super agile, super fast. You good? Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think we had a technical, we had an internet connection issue. Um, but anyway, uh, Kipper Tai has built the, the, uh, the PL mount for Ember and a PL mount with Revolva. And Revolva is their rotating ND um, system. It just slots right into their PL mount. And then you can just rotate different ND levels, whatever you want. So I think this will be super valuable add-on for Ember and then future products as well. Um, we've got different battery options. So this one's set up with uh, just a tiny uh, micro V-lock option that's kind of set up to be as tall, as small and lightweight as possible. Just comes from a DTAP connector right into the MicroFit connector on the Ember. And then for bigger, longer run times, bigger setups, we have our SL4 uh, battery, which has a big fancy power plate that has a bunch of, you know, kind of the cool thing here is you can power this via USB-C input and it'll power everything, charge the battery and power the camera. And then there's two high power USB-C outputs as well as two raw voltage outputs. So it gives you a lot of power flexibility if you're building a big, uh, you know, a big setup and you want um, super long run times. Uh, okay, so that goes over power systems. Um, I mean, just in general, things that I love about the camera are just the things that I've been griping about being a drone pilot and flying cameras for a long time. Cameras have always been too big. They've always been too fancy, too many buttons, too much BS that I don't care about. I just wanted a cube that had mounting points on all sides, was super small, super light, super robust, and was simple to use and could be integrated into all the things that I was most interested in using, which was 
gimbals, drones, cars, planes. You know, I want to put the camera in the most dynamic and interesting places and you know, see what we get. Um, and so that's what we really built in Ember. But we didn't, we didn't want to make it a camera that was terrible to use for people that weren't like-minded, so it's easy to build on and add on and add accessories and whatever you need to do. Um, is it still, we're still having issues? No. Okay, good. Uh, having wire or internet issues, sorry. Um, so yeah, that kind of goes over the, the mechanics of it. Uh, I, I really love that there's an internal SSD because it just makes it simple to use always. Um, you know, as life gets busy, like managing media gets to be a pain in the butt. So having an option at least to have internal SSD is really nice. Uh, and with that, I think let's talk about a few fun future things. So Ansel has, will you pull up the, the pull, play the Kipper Tie video and then show the image? Yep. And mine is not streaming. Okay, so yeah, John from Kipper Ties, just a video he sent me. Um, this just shows one idea for external media for Ember that he had. So it's mounting just in an SSD essentially on the side or, or their long take media. We were kicking around this idea and then I think the, the, the path that we're more likely to take is, do we have one that doesn't have any stuff on the back so I can show the expansion port? No? Uh, I can't show it right now very well. But anyway, there's a high speed expansion port on the back of the camera and I think it's like 40 times faster than USB. Um, so I think what we're likely to do is we're likely to build a two slot expansion media port off the back that will be super fast. So you would either be able to dump the whole 46 minutes of Ember footage in about a minute, or you could record directly to these, this media. So this is, this is the trajectory we're exploring for the roadmap. Um, you know, the thing we're gonna launch with is just internal media but a bunch of people do want external media. We're gonna build it in the future you know, with them. Um, so that'll be super fun. Uh, let's see. We had a couple, I'll, I'll just run through. Do any, any of the live questions that we should talk about? No, is it possible? Shot it's capable of like 24, 30, 60 FPS as well. Yeah, for sure. It's capable 24, 30, 60. There'll be a ton of ranges and options between let's say 24 and 800. Um, we don't know exactly where those are gonna fall yet, so I don't wanna misspeak and say any, you know, tell, tell you ones that are wrong, but there's gonna be a ton, of, a ton of frame rates in between those two kind of extremes. And you can just think of it, there's just, there's just data rate boundaries. So, you know, at 24, you can have higher image quality, and then when you go really, really fast, you might have to lower down into ProRes LT or something like that, which we'll get into that. That was one of the questions. Um, Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Native mount is a locking E-mount. That, uh, that's what we'll ship with. And then we have partners making PL mounts already. And, you know, hopefully in the future, if we continue to grow the, the brand, the ecosystem, the impact, we'll have more and more partners and th people building stuff for the camera. Um, can I charge the camera via USB-C? Uh, no, there's no internal battery. So um, that won't work, but you, you, def you can power things from the USB-C on the camera if you want, or like depending on what power plate you're using, whether it's ours or the little one, you can power all kinds of things. You can, these little FX Lion batteries that we've been using, you can charge them with a USB-C input. They have an output, they have an A output. So there's, there's a lot of power options depending on what your particular setup is. Um, what shots are you most excited to see from this camera? Well, I think, there's a couple different things. All the things that you would think of, like skydiving, FPV, high-speed drones, high-speed gimbals, all that stuff, that's super exciting. But I think a lot of the most the shots that really like get me are when you give this thing to a talented cinematographer or photographer that just hasn't had the opportunity to work with a high-speed camera before, and you just see what they come up with. It could be something as simple as walking through New York City and shooting for a day. The thing about being able to shoot 800 FPS is it's just a completely different dimension of filmmaking. and things that look, you know, that in real time look trivial or uninteresting. Sometimes if you capture them in a, you know, with at 800 FPS in a new way, it just, they look stunning. You know, things as simple as water droplets coming off a leaf or a mountain biker sliding by. I mean, Hugh and Ansel have been testing the crap out of this thing. And, you know, that 
you walk by them when they're shooting and it looks like they're just shooting a very normal shot. And then you see the shot at the end and you're like, wow, that's incredible. Um, would, be, would you be able to adjust the vertical resolution to increase the frame rate like wave? Yes, definitely you will. The difference is wave uh, as you go faster and faster keeps the same field of view. Uh, this camera will not, so it's gonna zoom in. Um, will you offer 1080p at extreme frame rates? Yeah, but I don't know how extreme they'll be yet, but they'll be faster for sure. What's the weight? 820 grams, we talked about that. Uh, will you make different lens mount options? Yes, uh, so we have got the locking E mount. Um, we've got the locking PL mount already from uh, Kipper Tie. I am trying desperately to get in touch with somebody that runs the L mount project. I would love to support that. I can't get anybody to get back to me, so if anyone has any juice with the L mount folks, uh, hook me up. Um, is the IO panel swappable? Yes, so we designed the camera so this there's four bolts in this IO panel. IO, just for everybody, for everybody that like, doesn't do this all day long, just stands for input output. Um, this whole thing can come off. It's not a user changeable uh, item, but it can be a factory changed item. Maybe it could be a user, I don't know, we'll see. Depends on how good of a user you are. Um, so we, we built this so you can change this and we can adapt it in the future for different needs. Um, just a nice clean breakpoint so you can have different inputs, outputs in case you know a use case comes up that we didn't provide for. <clears throat> we make SDI IO panels. Uh, it's certainly possible to swap out this top hat with uh, a new one that has SDI. Um, for us, it just comes down to bandwidth, people, prioritization, um, money, time, effort, that kind of stuff. Uh, what kind of remote control do we have in the camera? So you have, I don't know if everybody's downloaded and played with the app, but you can get the app the, um, from our website, play with that, see what it's like. Uh, so you'll have control over the app. You'll have control eventually via uh, Movi Pro uh, if you connect directly into the GPIO. And then I'm sure in the long run, um, we're gonna wanna Inter er, interface for live sports and that kind of thing with the ethernet uh, port. So wireless, uh, GPIO, and then ethernet in the long run, you'll be able to control the camera. Why four pin Molex and not Limo for power? Is it a sturdy port? Uh, yeah, so they're talking about the power input cable is a locking Molex connector. Um, we use these because they're super lightweight, they're super robust, they are cheap, they're easy to get and they're small. And so once you start putting Limo connectors all over a camera, it drives the form factor to be huge, heavy, and just like frankly not optimized and it bothers me. So we've been using these type of connectors on Movi Pro for years. They're bulletproof. There's thousands of them in the field. You know, they're, they're not a problem. Um, I think there's a Limo lobby somewhere that has led the entire cinema industry slightly astray and has bigger, heavier expense or exp more expensive stuff than needed. Uh, what's the ethernet port, port for? Um, it, that'll be to connect to gimbals, cameras, live setups, whatever is, whatever's needed. So just future expansion really. Uh, what's the PCIe port for? So that's the expansion port that comes off the back of the camera. So that's just really a, an ultra high speed port for us to have accessories. So we kicked around the idea of having like a GPU backpack in case you want to do real time AI applications on this, or if you want to like the external media that you might want to write to, stuff like that. So super, super fast. How long will it record with four terabyte internal storage? So it'll record for about 46 minutes. Um, what type of ProRes is it? So it's ProRes 422, LT, Normal, and HQ are the three that we are licensed for right now. Uh, is there an Android app? No, there's not an Android app. We're not gonna build one either. Is the noise floor better than Wave? I don't know what exactly you mean by noise floor, but yes, the noise, it's, noise is tough, but yeah, the noise, I think I know what you're talking about, and yes, the noise is much better, but download all the raw clips that we posted and take a look for yourself. How does it compare to a Phantom Flex 4K? Um, we haven't done a side-by-side. -side. I, I don't have a, a Flex 4K. Uh, Dustin Farrell, I think is gonna do a comparison at some point in the near future. So we'll have an AB there. Um, I think it'll compare favorably, but we'll see. Uh, what other purposes besides film do you think this will be useful for? I'm really excited for uh, sports applications for this and then also for engineering and analysis. Um, you know, for example, I'm really into aviation, flying planes and helicopters, and I would love to know, you know, I'd love shots of the tail rotor on my helicopter, you know, is it vibrating? It'd be cool to, 
there's not many shots out there of like the main rotor, uh, tail rotor, are they vibrating, are they in track? Like it's just a really fascinating thing to see. Uh, so that's kind of, that's where we're at on Q and A. Is there any, any Q and A popped up that we should talk about? Yeah, people are wondering if we do anamorphic mode. Anamorphic mode, good question. Uh, totally technically possible, but not done yet. So I think it, I think it should be very trivial. And then there's a couple questions. Hmm. Do you want me to say the Kipper Tai thing again? Just, yeah, what they're doing for us. Okay, yeah. They're, well, so basically we met them and they're awesome and they were like, how can we help? And we said, could you tackle the external media portion of the project? And they said, yeah, that'd be great. Um, and so they've been, they've been working on that. And the two ways that we could do it, we can have the USB-C, we can have a USB-C right to a little drive. Uh, that's relatively slow compared to the high-speed expansion port off the back. So I'm more excited about the high-speed expansion port with the two long take cards on the back of the Ember because that would allow you, I think this is right, I think it's about, it'd be a one minute offload for four terabytes of footage. And then, so you could write to the internal and then back up to the cards, or you could write directly to the cards and then just swap those two cards out as you need to for whatever your setup is. So I think it depends on your particular use case. I think we, we still have a little bit of figuring out to do. I think there's, most likely how I'll use the camera is I'm gonna capture a bunch of stuff on the internal, and then using the app, I'm gonna select the chunks that I like and push those to an external media and then just grab those chunks and run with them or even maybe just use them right, right from the app. But I haven't really honed in on that exactly yet. Time-lapse mode? Time-lapse mode. Not right now, but technically very easy. Just have to send one Slack message to the right person here and it would happen 18 minutes later. If anyone can figure out who that person is, please let me know. Not you. Um, <clears throat> why won't you build Android capability? Uh, it's a 200 year long response. Uh, okay, let's, so I think. Um, oh yeah, yeah, let's show stabilizer. So uh, this is cool. So um, I was like agonizing this morning about how open I should be in the future with, with customers at Freefly. And I'll talk you through kind of the thought process. So on the one side, you, you can be very open. I can let everybody see what's going on in the company. But sometimes we screw up. And sometimes we talk about a feature and we think it's going to be great. And for some reason, it can't work. Uh, and that's always painful to backtrack on those kind of things. But I came to the conclusion that I'd rather just be open. And when we screw up or we make a mistake or we can't deliver on the thing that we, we said, we're just going to talk about it and tell you. Uh, I'm much more excited to give people a peek into how we're building the products here, how we're building the company, and kind of the philosophy with which we think about, you know, all these decisions and trade-offs that we have to make. So uh, on that topic, John, uh, and it, one of our camera engineers is in the UK, just sent some sample videos of the stabilizer stuff that he's working on, and it made my morning to see how cool it was. This is coming for cameras in the future at Freefly. And so I just wanted to share these two clips that he just gave a quick overview. And this is, I mean, this is literally like 10 minutes after he sent the first demo video of it. So you guys are seeing it just a few minutes after, after we all saw it internally and it's really awesome. So basically there's a really nice IMU in Ember. So it's keeping track of everything, you know, as far as uh, rates, pitch, roll, yaw rates, angles, accelerations. He's integrating that using some fancy maths and he's figuring out an, an attitude estimate for the camera. And then he's come up with a thing where you can just input the focal length of the lens and it'll analyze everything and figure out uh, stabilization uh, to apply. And you can just adjust how smooth you want it to look. And we've been iterating on this to get the right kind of look for quite a while. Um, one of the things we're known for is like the stabilization algorithms on the Movi are very organic and very precise. And so we're trying to bring that kind of same methodology to cameras so it doesn't look too robotic or um, manufactured. And John, John was one of the guys that originally helped define those algorithms on the Movi too. So this is a nice evolution of like work he's done in the past. Um, oh yeah, so here's, so you can see the graph on the bottom. Um, and I think,
Yeah, I think that's showing how much of the available uh, stabilization framing it's using. So you can think about it, basically, we're zooming in, we wanna zoom in as little as possible, and then we're gonna move that zoomed in frame around to get a totally smooth output. And Ansel did a test flight with an FPV drone here, and then this is running John's stabilization on it um, to see what kind of results we get with it. And it looks, I mean, it just looks stunning. So the end user experience that I want for this is I wanna capture a clip, push a button, say how smooth you want it to be, and you're done. No fussing around and you get just a beautiful shot. Because once that's here, then I can start to compete with the good FPV pilots because I've been left in the dust as far as drone piloting goes. So I'm using all the resources available at my disposal to catch up. Ansel, by the way, this feature won't be available to you. It's available to everyone else except for you. It's specific. We've, John, John closed out your IP on it. So um, what else do we have to show? Oh yeah, let's show this. So I think, uh, oh, well, let's show that at the very end. Let's show, let's do Charles and Dave uh, 3D printer. So uh, one of the things that we're doing at FreeFly is constantly looking for new tools, cool tools. How can we get better at the, you know, so we build these products, but also what we spend a lot of time thinking about is how do we build the machine that builds those products? How do we, how do we get better, faster, and more efficient at building products that the world needs? And so Charles and Dave are always kind of looking into that and saying, you know, basically they come every week and hit me up for many hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy this machine tool or PCBA or, you know, all kinds. Of, oh, look, you, yeah, here we are. do you need money? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Charles and Dave, take it over. Oh, here we are. Yeah. But let, let me set you up. We just got this 3D printer and it's awesome. It's called the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. I kind of ignore these two until something comes out of it because they're doing so much stuff like this that it's tough to keep up. But I walk by and this is a pretty awesome print and it happened fast and this looks really nice and has a screen and you know, it's, it looks great. So you guys, yeah. Dave, do you want the mic? You want Dave? Hold it between us. Hold it okay. between us, yeah. So Dave, uh, Dave also, I know your instinct is to say, it's a pretty cool 3D printer and then die and then the walk door, out. The people want to hear more. Yeah, there's lots of features on this. Do you want to talk about it, Charles? Yeah, so why is it cool, Dave? It's cool. Well, first of all, it has a nice color screen that's yeah. super high quality. I love all the doors and everything. They're magnetic. They just kind of, there's no weird latches or anything. Um, it seems incredibly high quality, um, like what you'd expect out of a lot of stuff coming out of uh, Shenzhen in uh, China. Um, it uses the XY system, which I, core XY, which I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but it's a way to get a really lightweight nozzle moving around, so you can basically accelerate really quickly, so it prints super fast. That's one of the main features. It's uh, really, really fast. Yeah. Um, this is like the second big thing. Yeah, uh, and then up the here, materials. it can auto change materials while you're printing. So it doesn't have two print heads. It pulls the material out, cleans the head, then puts new material in, so you can print I don't even know what the limit is. How many can you print? You can have four of these. Four so of these, so 16, 16 materials, 16 materials which is pretty wild. The more material switches you do, the, the longer your print gets. Yeah. It's just one head, it has to pull it out. It has little RFID guys in the spools, so it knows what material it is, so it can change the settings automatically, like you know nozzle temperature and feed rate and all that stuff. Um, but you don't have to use that. You can use just any material, right? So. Yeah. Uh, lots of really cool calibration stuff, too. There's a little LiDAR on the print head that allegedly does some cool stuff. There's a little bit of back and forth on the forums about what it's actually doing. But, <laughs> it um, might be it, black magic, but yeah, it's it, definitely looks like it's doing something. So it prints a test pattern and then scans the test pattern to characterize how the flow is working with the resin that you've put in there and kind of dial things back. Or, yeah, you know. it also has an auto tune because yeah. when you're moving this fast, you get a bunch of shakes at sharp corners. So it has some auto tuning. So it tries to eliminate that. It has a heated build chamber which is really important when you're printing uh, with like high temperature materials like nylon, because you get a lot of shrinkage and stuff. How hot does it get inside? I don't know. Hot enough to cook steaks? Not hot enough to cook We were steaks. talking about heating our sandwiches in there though. Mm. But also well, this why is- Why are you two eating sandwiches? No, I know, we should not Garbage. eat. Bread is terrible. Um, <laughs> hold on, breaking oh, news. Breaking uh, news. Sado camera asks if it's possible to have a log and how, many, how was the dynamic range? So dynamic range is about 12 stops. And there's no technical reason we couldn't have log we just need to convince some people on the engineering team that they're 
is a tech, th th there will be a technical benefit from the dynamic range and log, but I think we'll get there. We'll, we'll test it at least, and if it is helpful, we will release it. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Oh, carry on. Uh, also, this is heated and has desiccant in it, so it keeps your material dry, which is really important. Yeah. Good, um, consistent results. Yeah. Uh, each one of the little feeders for the material has a little motor in it and all kinds of mechanisms, which is kind of interesting. Mm. Like, they just went all out. There's yeah. lights inside the machine, so yeah. you can see. There's two cameras. It has a bird nest feature where if it starts to bird nest your part and ruin it, it's supposed to detect it somehow using... I, I don't want to say AI because everybody's saying that they these say days. AI, but it may just be who, who knows? Yeah, who knows exactly what's happening? Um, the build quality is excellent, though. When like everything's finished, there's a cover over the print head that just pops off with magnets. Really got it spooled up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 this thing's excellent. And if you act now, it's fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> we don't sell it though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's really great. If you buy, th no. yeah. yeah. Ten anyway. years ago, a printer with these features would have been. Well, it didn't exist. Yeah. It just didn't exist. This is, this is, I don't want to say names, but this is better than some of the other printers this, we have. A hundred years ago, this printer would have cost, would have cost $20 trillion. <laughs> 20 trillion, true. You have to develop an entire Charles, economy. He, he would have delivered it to us on a horse drawn carriage. Absolutely. <laughs> what I don't know about is the software. How is the software, the slicer and stuff the that slicer, it comes with? I've used Jura and Prusa Slicer, and this is comparable in terms of features and okay. ease of use. Oh, it right. has a phone app too, right? So yeah, you can see the phone the... app. Let me last night watch while that was printing to make sure. It had when you a yeah, nice when you're app. when you're out cooking your steak, you can yeah. check that your printer is still running properly. Yeah. Um, it prints. Oh, it prints uh, nylon with carbon in it, which is mm -hmm. great. The little pad in here is reversible, so you can like pull it out and flip it over for printing. One side is labeled like. Usually, I can't get them going. Now I can't <laughs> stop. P L A P E T G and A B S, and the other side is like the. Yeah, this is, is a lower oh, down with Dave, let's do our challenge. Okay, so it? this is for everybody out there. I want to see uh, oh. what kind of first principles thinkers you are. So Dave and I are on a walk the other morning. We're yelling at each other. He's telling me all the ways I'm deficient as a human, and I'm yelling at <laughs> all the ways he's deficient as a human. And then we stumble up across a spider web dangling in our view. And it's such a fine spider web that you can barely see it. And it has a little pine needle hanging on it. And we're like, wow, it's amazing. How is that thing strong enough? That pine needle's huge. It's a big pine needle. Big pine needle. <laughs> yeah. And then so he says, I wonder how wide it is. And I, I said something like, in what unit? And he says, atoms. And so we spent the next 20 minutes of the walk arguing and trying to derive how wide the spider web was in Adam. So don't look it up and guess in the comments. And if you guess right, Charles will send you a gift. Carbon Adam. Carbon Adam, yeah. Yeah. So because it's um, mostly carbon. A few other things I just, <laughs> I think we're about done here. It's devolving. But a few other things to touch on. I just wanted to say thanks to the people that helped uh, make this camera possible on the, on our, I can clip this thing back on. You're welcome, Ms. Data. Uh, G Pixel makes a sensor. They helped us a ton to get to where we are today. Trends makes the FPGA that we're using. They've been super helpful. The supply chain crisis over the last couple of years has been a disaster. So, you know, it's really been really tough to get through all this. Um, Kipper Tie, uh, just met them. They're awesome. They're designing stuff for us. It's, it's making the ecosystem much better already. I love it. It makes me so excited to be, you know, to be a... It's really cool to have a camera that you build and other people want to build things for it. It's like, how is this real? You know, if you knew Freefly and you saw us, you'd be like, you guys have no business building a camera, like 10, <laughs> 10 dingbats in a horse barn. Um, <laughs> but it's just really fun to see that. Uh, who else helped? Is there anyone else I should mention? I don't want to forget people. I mean, the whole team that did the camera is awesome. Uh, I'll have them in, there, in here more as time goes on. Um, Hugh and Ansel did a lot of the testing and shooting and Henry, so that was really great. Um, yeah, I think let's, uh, so one other thing. I've been learning how to fly helicopters and planes for the last couple of years just as a fun hobby outside of free fly. And so um, I became friends with this guy named Mark who is the, the chief pilot for Daher. They make the Kodiak uh, and we recently did a shoot with him for the Kodiak 900 launch, and we found a clip today that we had like discarded, and it's really cool, and I wanted to show it. Um, but we're going to be doing a bunch of shoots, upcoming Ember shoots, um, with Mark and with Kodiak. Uh, so I just wanted to sh for the last thing we do, I want to show this clip on the way out because it's really stunning. Oh, and this this clip was shot from the GSS gimbal. So big props to those guys. We're going to work to get an Ember in the GSS soon, and I think. 
So our GSS has a Canon 50 to 1000, that's what we shot this on, and I am so excited to be able to shoot 800 FPS with that Canon 50 to 1000, so it's gonna be game on. But anyway, this is a plane similar to what I'm trying to learn how to fly well right now, so. So this is Mark in the Kodiak 900 coming into the Kameno Airport, which is up near our drone ranch. And this, this aircraft is just incredible because it, <clears throat> it can fly super fast, like 210 knots, and then it can slow down and get into these tiny, crazy little strips. This strip is very small and very uphill. And you'll see he just greases it in there. It's a big plane, so it's not like a, you know, it's not a Cessna 150 or anything. Um, and then you can see the GSS, like Hughes punched in on it and it's just gorgeous. You can get my Mark will go full frame here. So I'm, was one of the things people are excited about for Ember. I'm so excited to apply Ember to aviation. I think it's just gonna be stunning. You're gonna be able to see the props and flutter and the control surfaces and the rotor blades. That's I mean, it's gonna be amazing. Oh, keep, let, let, that, let that shot go. It's way more interesting than Dave and I. So anyway, he turns around and then takes off from this airport. And this airport, the interesting thing is when you're, when you're um, getting ready to take off, you're looking out towards the ocean and the airport falls away so quickly that you can't even see the end of the airport. All you see is the ocean. So you're basically, your experience as a pilot is you're, you're just power up and you're just heading towards the ocean. And it's just, uh, just an amazing, amazing little airport in the Northwest. And this was shot with our X5 with the GSS on the front of it. I think I was driving and Hugh was operating. And when Hugh's operating the GSS, he just has this giant perma grin on his face, which <laughs> is very fun. It is a very smooth gimbal. Yeah, it's really great. I love it. All right. And then you can see just the climb performance on this plane is nutso. He just goes up elevator. It is crazy. It looks like an RC plane. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that thing go? Uh, I just want to do one last look for questions. Uh, is the Revolva PL mount the same as that for RED cameras or a new configuration for Ember? That's a new configuration for Ember. Uh, do, do, do. Check in for... Uh, Small gimbal you made for this camera on a drone. Funny you should mention that. I was just arguing for that internally. I really want an Ember flying on an Astro with our tiny little gimbal soon. I think that'd be super fun. So I'm gonna keep marketing internally and see if I can get people on board with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, I think we're gonna do this every week. Just let us know what you would like to hear about. I'd love to talk about a wide range of topics from you know, what kind of steak I prefer to eat, to how we run things at FreeFly, to show the teams that we have here, the products, whatever, you know, the philosophy behind cool growing the camera, just anything yeah. that you're interested in that happens kind of behind the curtain at FreeFly, we're happy to talk about. Um, and it would, I think it'd be super fun and hopefully help other people that maybe are on this journey that we're on in a different part of the journey. Yeah. All right. All right Bye, everybody. Give Ansel a big hug um, for pulling this all off today. Yeah, so good awesome. job, Ansel. Thanks, Ansel. <laughs>